The Lord be with you. Um, I apologize for being four minutes late. It's all my fault. I acknowledge my, my defects and my failures in life. Thank you. Um, my, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary of her Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Woe to those who plan iniquity and work out evil on their couches. In the morning light they accomplish it when it lies within their power. They covet fields and seize them, houses and they take them. They cheat an owner of his house, a man of his inheritance. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am planning against this race an evil from which you shall not withdraw your necks, nor shall you walk with head high, for it will be a time of evil. On that day, a satire shall be sung over you, and there shall be a plaintive chant. Our ruin is complete. Our fields are portioned out among our captors. The fields of my people are measured out, and no one can get them back. Thus you shall have no one to mark out boundaries by lot in the assembly of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. Why, O Lord, do you stand aloof? Why hide in times of distress? Proudly the wicked harass the afflicted, who are caught in the devices the wicked have contrived. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. For the wicked man glories in his greed, and the covetous blasphemes sets the Lord at naught. The wicked man boasts he will not avenge it. There is no God, sums up his thoughts. Do not forget the poor of the Lord. His mouth is full of cursing, guile, and deceit. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. He lurks in ambush near the villages. In hiding, he murders the innocent. His eyes spy upon the unfortunate. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. You do see, for you behold misery and sorrow, taking them into your hands. On you the unfortunate man depends. Of the fatherless, you are the helper. Do not forget the poor, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went out and took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. When Jesus realized this, he withdrew from that place. 
Many people followed him and he cured them all. Uh, but he warned them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through Isaiah the prophet. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom I delight. I shall place my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not contend or cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A breezed reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, uh, our Lord has just um, healed the man with a withered hand, and um, some of the people take counsel against him to put him to death. A little overreaction if you ask me, but such is life. Um, the, so what does Jesus do? Does, does he scream and yell? Does he start a riot? Does he topple statues and burn, burn down neighborhoods? Does he, um, no. Does he go onto the uh, internet and um, uh, log onto Facebook and start screaming? No. He does none of the above. Um, uh, he will not contend or cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A breezed reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice to victory. And so what we can say is that we are not called to be perpetually outraged. We are called to live in charity. Now, anger is a problem. It's a personal, for me, it's a personally particularly grave problem. But the thing when we, the way to deal with anger is to recognize first and examine it and see what's going on with anger. Why did God make us capable of anger? He built it into us because it has a very real function in human life. It isn't something that is unnatural or in itself sinful. God made anger one of the common emotions that we feel. But what it is meant for is as a reaction of just, to injustice. For example, if I'm walking down the street and I see um, an adult um, physically beating up a child, if I don't get angry, there's something seriously wrong with me. I am being um, vicious and not virtuous in not getting angry. There are situations where we should get angry. But notice that anger is meant to stop an injustice, and that's all it's meant for. The problem, however, is that like, as with all emotions, anger has no truth content. I can get angry when there's no basis for anger. I can be angry out of proportion to the injustice. I can misperceive justice. I can, um, I can be angry about one thing and take that anger out on something else. So there's all sorts of ways in which anger can go askew. I'm seeing husbands and wives poking each other in the ribs. But anyway, the, um, there's all sorts of ways in which anger can uh, go awry. And so it is always best to us to never react directly out of anger, but rather reflect, are my perceptions correct? Um, uh, is my emotion uh, in, um, in direct, uh, direct proportion to the injustice that's being done? And am I, am I taking my anger out on the wrong person? Those are all things to do. Then what we need to do is make sure that we use the anger to stop the injustice, to change the situation. It is not to take revenge. It is to change the injustice. Now further, um, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. It's not ours to take vengeance, it's God's job to take vengeance. He'll do it, and he'll do a much better job than we will, because he can do it for eternity. Um, but anyway, um, the, the, um, 
Finally, it has to be said that um, sometimes there are injustices we just can't change. And the only thing we can do about those is to continue to work for the justice, but also to forgive. Because if we don't forgive, we end up poisoning our own lives with the injustices other people have done. Um, the funny thing about injustice is if I, if I commit a, an unjust act against somebody, um, I'm hurting myself. Um, however, the other person compounds that by, um, by, by not getting over the anger and thereby making his or her life um, uh, miserable because of the injustice done. We internalize the injustice in such a way that it becomes impossible to bear. There's an old saying, folk saying that depression is anger turned inward. So on this day uh, where we, as we every Saturday celebrate Our Lady uh, in her, her sanctity, let us ask that we be transformed, that our anger is purified and is strengthened to do what it needs to do and that when it isn't able to do that, that we not perpetuate um, the poisoning, but rather learn how to forgive. Um, let us offer up to our Heavenly Father our prayers and petitions for, um, for Francis our Pope, for Andrew our Bishop, for all the t bishops throughout the, the world, that they might um, fulfill their vocations uh, in truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For the President, for the Supreme Court, for Congress, for the men and women of our armed services, for policemen and firemen, for the governor, for the state legislature and judiciary, for all those who, who, um, uh, who work for the common good, let us pray to the Lord. For the hungry, the homeless, the unemployed, those who are sick in mind or body, those who are victims of abortion, addiction, um, uh, civic strife, and ethnic violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bryson, Kashaweda, and for all the intentions that are hidden in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and the religious life, and for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our God of love, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, and grant us what we ask of you this day in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid, and may he who at his birth from the, vir the Blessed Virgin did not diminish, but consecrated her integrity by taking upon us now our wicked deeds make our oblation acceptable to you. Through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in honor of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Andrew, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. I'm sorry, I should have sung. Amen. I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to do that. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each no, we're not good. Let us not offer each other the sign of peace. <sighs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take us away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be under the mind. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Blessed is the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech you, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Um, so, um, communion will be, uh, as we've been doing for daily Mass, that those who receive in either their hands or on their tongue will come to this side, and those in hand only to this side. Um, please exit by the side doors after receiving um, communion. Um, Charity begins at home, go home. <laughs> 